Yo guys, if you're looking down, your heart's feeling empty, come over laugh with us from Shadow Soul 720. So, um, I'm here to talk to you guys today about Spring Rebellion. It's a protest rally sort of group that's international at the moment. Um, and what they're all about. I'm going to be talking about whether they're good, bad, uh, whether their points and stuff are valid or not, and why we should care. Alright, so, okay, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of background information first. So, uh, Spring, yeah, Spring Rebellion is a group that focuses on climate change. So the reason that they rally and stuff is to try and get people's attention, especially like governments and stuff, because they don't feel like enough stuff is happening towards climate change. They feel like our planet's dying, um, that, you know, for example, in Australia in the last 10 years, nothing's really been done about climate change. Um, that was the last time we had policies done, and apparently something... Like, I, I could be making these statistics up, I don't remember, but I was told something like, over the last 10 years, during that time, our CO2 emissions have doubled, <laughs> apparently, which is huge and really awful, and people already know stuff like that the ice caps are melting, um, the sea is rising, etc. I don't know, you, you guys can listen to Bliss and Esso's song, The Sea is Rising, if you want. That's a great song. Um, and, yeah, so, are they, is it a good thing, is it a bad thing, are they righteous, I don't care, <laughs> I don't care about any of that stuff, right, um, the, the main point that I want to try and get across is that they're doing some, some of the rallying stuff is fair enough, um, like, I went to this thing the other day where there was a whole bunch of people in a park uh, with signage and stuff and people were hanging out talking about the issue and that's really good. That's really beneficial. Um, but there's other times when they'll do stuff such as uh, marching through a, a town, for example, right? Or a city or whatever. And they'll be going... S I don't know if this is on purpose or not, but they'll be going so slowly that they hold up all the traffic. Um, and it might actually be a goal, because the main reason for protesting is to try and disrupt society enough, apparently, so that, uh, so that the government feels like they have to step in, and then they potentially talk demands with these people, and then they get to a point of, hey, uh, we want this, we want this, what's it going to take for you to stop doing this, um, and then they're going to say, their demands or whatever, what they want changed, the government's actually going to listen, potentially do something. That's the idea behind protesting. It's so that you can get through to the government, the government body, whatever that may be, um, to get to get a point across. Now, holding up traffic is pretty bad. Uh, like, <laughs> if it's on accident, it's not so bad. But you know, there's also this thing they've got called a die-in, which is interesting. Uh, which stirred up some issues and stuff recently down here, a little bit, uh, at least to talk about it, which was um, that people lie on the ground in a public area because they're a casualty of climate change. So it's a metaphor, metaphorical thing that people are literally trying to go to do, right? They lay on the ground. And this is something that I didn't know how to approach at first because I'm very open-minded and as far as these guys go with their issues I support their cause 100% I do feel like the government needs to do more about climate change I do feel like there's not enough going on um, you know it is an international world issue of course um, I don't know what it's like in other countries but I'm assuming it's not that different um, like maybe some people that places have recyclable forks and spoons and etc. I don't know. I don't know what's happening in other places. Um, but all I can speak on is say, for example, our recycling down here, we have recycling bins. I think they were implemented maybe 10 years ago. Um, but I think apparently now I've been told that all the recycling just goes into the ocean. I don't know, like it just it goes along with the other trash and it's not really worried about. I don't know how true or false that is, 
I can't say. These are just things to think about. Um, but I, I feel like there's definitely not enough happening throughout society. That they, the rebellion's point is that the government isn't putting in enough effort. I think that's probably true. And there's definitely a lot of individuals that put in the most effort, right? To the point where they can be completely green. But sadly, one person being green isn't enough to help everyone. It is going to contribute a lot. <laughs> but it's basically contributing to the point of just not existing, you know? Because if that, it's as if that person didn't exist and that's the contribution to greenhouse gases. And large scale change will help a lot. Now I'm not saying, yeah, so back to my main point. I like the cause a lot. Whether or not it's, some of these things are going too far is an issue. Um, because if people are lying down in public spaces, of course it's going to annoy, annoy people, you know, civilians, police officers, etc. Um, which is a good but bad thing. It's helping them get their cause out, right? Because, let's face it, no one can talk to the government, right? There's no real way to talk to them. Uh, and to get large scale change enough, there's no real ways to do that. Um, now, is this going about it the right way? I can't say. Okay, I don't know. I don't know if there's any alternatives. It's probably not the right way, but I can't see any alternatives to this. Um, which is really sad. So, there was an issue the other day where, now this is all just information I've outsourced from friends and people. I haven't done a lot of research into this topic. I don't know a lot. Don't, don't base my opinion on fact, but I was told that there was a politician down in Australia somewhere, uh, could have potentially been Tasmania, I'm not sure, but I think it was definitely just, you know, broad Australia, um, and they said that, you know, if you see like one of these activist guys laying on the road, laying on the ground, just run him over. Don't feel bad. Just, just do it. And I, <laughs> like, I don't know if it was like that or if it sounded a lot more harsh. It probably did sound harsher. But from what I'm hearing, when I first heard that, I felt pretty upset, right? Like this guy is a huge asshole. Who wants to run over people? <laughs> what a fucking idiot, you know? Um, and as a politician to say that. But the more I looked into it, the more I thought about it, the more I realized there's some validation to that point. So if someone's lying on the road, yeah, this politician may look like an asshole, but if someone say, for example, accidentally ran over them when they were on the road, right? They would feel awful. <laughs> they would feel so bad. But they really shouldn't, right? Because, why was that person on the road? If you hit an animal on the road, there's not a lot you can do about it. People, people know about these systems. And if they're lying on the road, they're just asking to not live, you know? Like, and why give up your life, <laughs> potentially there, when, for example, on this uh, side of climate change, you could be living your life and then living it in a green way. You could be helping other people live their life in a green way, supporting your cause like that. So I'm not sure if people are on, like on lying on the road or not, but that's something you should definitely consider. Um, and that's when I feel like it probably goes too far, for sure. Um, and like, I wouldn't want to be the person to hit that person on the road. But yeah, if, if anyone does hit a person on the road like that, don't feel too bad. That's what I'm trying to say. It's like if a random person you didn't know died, you can't feel too bad, okay? <laughs> and even if you had to talk to these people first and be like, don't lay on the road, who knows if it would have helped. Anyway, I'm, I'm getting off topic, forget that part. Uh, now, if what a politician meant was, hey, if you see people laying down on the sidewalk, 
hit them when you, with your car. Uh, <laughs> and that is awful. <laughs> Don't do that, please. Um, my first reaction to the whole die-in thing of people lying down on the ground pretending to be casualties, being casualties of climate change, uh, I thought that it was odd. And now, I'm a pretty odd person myself. So, I would probably do something like that. But the fact that it's an organised sort of event where several people were doing that, that's pretty interesting to me, pretty strange. Because I do it randomly, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah, for a whole bunch of people to act odd is interesting. To say the least. Um, so, where do I stand on this? I think that supporting this group is good. I can see why people wouldn't want to be associated with them. I can see why people wouldn't want to go against the government. Um, especially because a lot of people get benefits from the government, right? They're, they're the ones that can persecute us for anything, I guess, <laughs> if they wanted to. Um, but some people are living in conditions so poor. <laughs> people are so worried about climate change, they don't really care because they'd rather have the world for much more generations. <laughs> At least an extra generation, right? Let's be honest. Um, and more years, they want a healthier world, a healthier earth for us to live in. So they're prepared to like sacrifice, right? The main point of uh, rallying, whatever, protesting is self-sacrifice. Uh, at the very least, you, like myself, I could be there and just sacrifice time, right? For me, it's not sacrificing time because I get to meet cool people. I get to meet things that are pretty interesting um, people. And I, I go to some interesting events, I meet ideas that I either agree with or don't. But being there and, and just supporting it's fine. Getting active, active in these events, maybe, maybe not to a point. Okay, I can see why people wouldn't want to. Um, should you listen to my advice and do it or not do it? No, no, you should make up your own decision. <laughs> and if you're watching this video just trying to decide that, or if you're just watching my video because you want to, right? You think it's some sort of entertainment? That's awesome. That's, that's really cool. Yeah, uh, don't listen to my opinion. Just let it, like, reinforce what you're thinking. Um, which is, for me, it's it's going far but not going too far. It's it's trying, it would be... It's, it's definitely fighting for a cause you believe in. But it's not fighting to a, a cause in, that you believe in that could be fairly harmful to others, right? Um, and if it took away from the main cause, then that wouldn't help either. Now, are these protesters bad people? Right? Or is it actually the government? Oh no, the government. That's bad, right? Both are correct. Both are incorrect. It's not that this group or this group, it's not that either one of them is bad, it's just that they're people. And this group of people and this group of people, they're not communicating to each other, right? These people that have this huge problem, these people that are supposed to take care of problems, right? They're not communicating. And it's a, it's a huge government body and they probably have lots of things that they're doing all the time, as we all know, right? They're, they're in control of like everything, so they'd have, they wouldn't have a lot of time to do this sort of stuff. But these people, they have a lot of time to do stuff. And maybe that's a fact of society. Um, or maybe it's just because there's a rebellion, right? It's a lot of things that people feel strongly about and they want to change. It's not necessarily that they have a lot of time. They could, and that would be a factor, I guess. But my main point is that both of these sides, neither one's bad. They're just bad because they're not communicating properly. And these guys uh, that are protesting, they're trying really hard to communicate. And because they have to try so hard to communicate, they're going about it the wrong way, right? But there's no other option left for them. And these guys, they're not trying to communicate. They've got their hands full. If you imagine it like this, it's kind of like the government is, I don't know, your, your, your strict father at home who's like, 
writing down notes. He's always like about business, right? Um, as soon as he's finished one task, he's on to the next. So like you're trying to get his attention. He's just he's just writing. He's just he, he's like I, I can't talk right now, Johnny. And like that's why these people feel like they have to protest so hard. And then once he's finished the job for the day, he goes on to the next one because they were always busy with everything. And then once they have some free time, what do they want to do? They want to relax and sleep, right? They want to not do the stuff they have to do. So they're full on into work, then they're full on off work. That leaves no time for Johnny, right? <laughs> it's like a parent that's just like, no, not now, Johnny, I need to sleep. Like as soon as they're done. So, you can kind of understand both sides, right? Neither one's bad. You can't blame a dad for wanting to do work. You can't blame a kid for wanting to experience the world and grow up, right, and live. Live, live specifically because about climate change and people are worried that we won't have a, a climate to change, we won't have an earth. So, this person that wants to change the world, be their own world, help, you know, you, you know what I'm trying to say. These two bodies, these two groups, no communication's happening. And that's really sad. And that's the main thing that needs to change. We need to get these issues sorted and we need to get them talked about and communicated. Now, if they were to talk right, both these groups, what would actually change? That's what I feel like people are gonna struggle on. How do you actually make the world more green in like in an industrious way? Now, I'm pretty sure there's a few suggestions out there. I don't have them. I definitely don't have them. I ask for them fairly often. Like people have integrated more, like I was saying earlier, uh, cutlery, right, into restaurants that's biodegradable. That's great, that's good. Uh, McDonald's straws, they're paper, which is good. And like sometimes they serve their purpose for like the drink's duration, but with like a thick shake or a frozen Coke or something, uh, Sometimes I'd rather just have metal straws, but apparently they can like poke your eye out or something. It's real bad. And I miss plastic ones at times. It's just because like by the time you're drinking it, like at the top of the straw, it gets all like, it's like there's no, there's no way to suction anything out anymore. The whole thing's just folded over. It's like this. <laughs> like, it was like this originally, now it's like this. Those are some issues, that, those are some things we could tweak. <clears throat> so, you know, even if it was, for example, the straws themselves. What if one side of the straw had a little bit of some material on it, right? Uh, it could be plastic, I don't really care. Like, it's still a lot less on the straw. It still helps. But some sort of material on the top that would stop it from uh, just melting so fast. <laughs> right because it's only really the top of the straw that seems to do that. I could be wrong. Don't know, but it's just little things like that. We need to communicate these issues. If McDonald's is not doing straws properly, we need to tell them. Are they gonna change? Who knows, it's a large corporate entity, right? One person complaining about their straws isn't gonna help it, but a bunch, maybe. And I'm sure a lot of you can relate to this on a larger level. <laughs> Regardless of your views on climate change and the government. So... Yeah. I think that's about all I wanted to cover in this video. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you have any suggestions for how we could help with climate change, um, and if there's some sort of stuff that we should be doing a lot more globally, please leave it in the comments below. I know that the main issue about getting the government to notice a lot of this stuff is because they have a lot of the power and control. They do have the majority of the economy, the, the uh, money in their wallet. They take taxes from people anyway. And yeah, that goes to a whole bunch of different stuff like medical bills and stuff that's really important. It's also important to note that a lot of the things that can help the world um, and climate change and that sort of stuff is stuff, regardless of what side you're on, as a fact that 
needs to be shipped out fairly globally, right? And fairly, fairly industrially. Like recycling bins, for example. They get delivered to every home. People now use them all the time, right? Or at least people say they use them, I don't know. Um, it's the same sort of thing. If we want greener energy, if we can supply and ship that out in tandem with everyone else, I don't know how to explain what I'm saying right now, but if we ship it out all at the same time to a lot of places, that's going to help. That's going to help start trends, people are going to start doing it. You might have to make laws around it, but some people would be happy with that, others wouldn't. Um, maybe we could start, some people are going to hate this suggestion, but maybe we could start implementing bikes. Just bikes that you can go on and that powers something in the house. Or even having the option to do that. Having a treadmill, a bike that powers something. Maybe people will start getting a little more fit. Not that I'm saying people are fat, but if people want to get fit without going to zap all the time, or like a gym, uh, riding a bike casually while watching TV, it's okay, for a bit. There's gonna be times when you don't want to ride a bike at all and watch TV, but it's the implement implementation of these that help. And it's always important to have an open mind and not just focus on one side. Like, I wouldn't want to ride on one of those bikes because I don't like I don't, I, like, I don't like doing a lot of exercise. I like just watching TV and relaxing. And then you have the other people that say, oh, I love, I love doing exercise. You get fit, you get to watch the TV, you get to do both at the same time. I wouldn't do it any other way. I don't know why you don't. It's not good to be on either side. It's good to accept that both sides have faults, that TV is good to be watching when you're relaxing, and some people are gonna prefer that, and some people are gonna prefer to get fit while watching TV. So it's good to at least take, keep these things in mind so you can implement strategies that help both, right? So we eventually get to the same goal, which helps everyone. All right, well, I'm Shadow Soul 720 I've, I'm a life coach. I've been talking to you guys today. Hopefully this helped. Uh, life coach is just a general title I put there. It doesn't need to mean anything with this video. Just letting you guys know. Um, that's what I do, and yeah, I hope this video has helped. Support each other and take care guys, and I'll catch you all somewhere. Peace. Bye.